Welcome to Tweak's Tech Corner. Today I want to talk about a Raspberry Pi 2 file server that I have at my house and I use pretty much every single day. There's lots of videos talking about how to make this, but this video is not how to make it. This video is how, it, how well does it work. Can you use it at home? Just some default specs for the Raspberry Pi 2. I mean, you can look at it. The main two items of note are the quad-core processor and the one gigabyte of RAM. This is what the Raspberry Pi looks like. She's a beauty. For $35, you can't beat it. Embarrassing, I know, but this is where my file server sits currently. I hope to do another project and put it in a case and make it much more tidy looking, but for now it's a couple hard drives and a USB hub and a basket. The hub powers everything and it works fine for the moment. Uh, I'm running Raspbian Linux on the Raspberry Pi file server and I'm just showing this to show you that it does have terminal support if you're into that sort of thing. I personally prefer to use Webmin. It's not the best, it has problems and some diehard Linux guys are going to yell at me. But for what I need it for and the occasional things I do, this is what I use. Uh, I have, like I said, two hard drives and anyone can add them here. It's a relatively simple process. I use Samba Windows file sharing to uh, make, make sure it's cross compatible with every platform computer, so Android, Mac, whatever. I happen to have all those at my house and iPhone, so it's all available for everyone, even on my other Raspberry Pi that I have as my media player at my living room. This is just showing that I do actually have two drives available to me at all times from my computer. You can see the network drives down there, Y and Z, and the space available. They work just like any other drive through this network, so I like it. Now to the meat. Um, yes, so I basically the Raspberry Pi is plugged into a switch, which is then plugged into another switch for the modem router, ETC. So the Raspberry Pi is always plugged in, wired in, if you will, but I did a wire transfer plugged into the switch and I got a transfer speed on a 1 gig movie file of about 9.3 megabytes a second. This is not the fastest ever, it's a, kind of a lightweight, but it's Raspberry Pi. It's got a USB 2 interface, so you're not going to get amazing blazing speeds, but 9 megabytes a second wired, that's fine with me. I mean, what else? That'll move some files. Uh, I did do a wireless test, so I plugged in a wireless card into my desktop and I transferred the same file from the Raspberry Pi and I got a transfer speed of 6.78. The uh, This is just a screen grab showing you that I actually did do this and I did achieve those speeds. So there you go, one was on Windows 10 and one was on Windows 7 I think, whatever. Uh, I did some streaming of from the Raspberry Pi to my desktop and I was getting about 10 megabits of bandwidth traffic streaming from the Pi. It's not a lot and this will change according to compression ratios and file types, all of that, but for me, on the four different file types I tried, I got about 10 to 12, so that's just what I got. Your mileage will vary a little bit, but I did a YouTube stream of 1080p content also just to see the difference in what I the bandwidth needed and YouTube used 22 so a little, little less compression a little better quality maybe but just to show you can stream lots of movies from your Raspberry Pi it will I've streamed up to three I think HD movies to different devices at the same time from the Pi and it worked very well I hope this has helped everyone at least understand how the Pi operates as a file server and its capabilities. If you have questions or comments, put them down below. Like if you like it, dislike if you don't. Another video coming soon. Thanks.